Look at my face. God manufactured human beings and when he was designing people, he gave us one mouth and two ears. Why do you think he did that? He wanted us to listen more than what we speak. But knowing that human beings, you know, are still very incorrigible, he decided to place both these ears at 180 degrees. Unlike my eyes or my nostrils, which are near to each other, he put the ears in two extremes. Meaning to say, not only listen, but listen 360 degrees. Then he was still not convinced that we are going to be good listeners. So he made sure that he gave us two ears which don't close at all. There's no way you can close your ears. You can stuff cotton into it. You'll still hear me if I speak loud enough. And he gave us one mouth whose most comfortable position is a closed position. Try and sit like this or try and see how uncomfortable it is. Yet, from the time we are children, we compete with each other in talking, but nobody bothers to listen. We only hear. Now, what is this thing called listening and how is it that we can uh, develop and how does it help also? Let's look at uh, that. Keep counseling aside for a minute. Whenever you are interacting with any human being, whoever it may be, a very ordinary low down person or a person right at the top, the more you listen, the more your knowledge increases. The more you talk, the more you are increasing the other person's knowledge. Now, why don't you, when the person is very happy sharing his knowledge with you, why is it that you don't want to benefit from it and why do you want to interrupt and tell him what you like? Take a very simple <coughs> example. Here is this uh, uh, person, you go to him and say, Hey, these cricket matches are starting and it's so exciting and you know, aren't you thrilled with the matches that are going to take place? And this guy tells you, Sorry, I am not interested in cricket at all, but I am a tennis buff. I love tennis. And you know when this Wimbledon was happening and these days, these, you have already switched off. I am not interested in tennis, why should I listen to this guy? Yes, you have a right to have an interest in cricket. You already know a lot about cricket. You are fascinated uh, with cricket. You spend a lot of time watching cricket or even playing cricket. But here you are free of cost. You are getting a brief lesson on tennis about which you don't know anything. So at least if you listen to that person for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, you will get to know certain angles about something which you do not know. If not now, later, sometime, maybe if you develop an interest in tennis, you will already have in your mind somewhere whatever this person had spoken about. Even if you don't want to take interest in uh, tennis, you will be what I would call tennis literate. Tomorrow there is somebody of importance or significance talking about tennis. You don't have to put up a blank face because you have at least learnt a few nuances, few basics from this person. So in general also, listening really helps. Now if you want to be a caring and a loving human being, you want to be a counsellor, it becomes even more imperative. Once you have shown to the person that I am non-judgmental, I am willing to listen to you, start off with understanding that listening is not done only with the ears, it is done with the mind, it is done with the eyes. You would have probably heard that 55% of our communication intake is visual. Even the balance 45% is not the text of what the person says. 37% of that is the tone in which he said it. Only 8% of your communication intake is by the text of the person. If you have somebody coming up to you and say, <laughs> You think you are looking wonderful, is it? Oh, great, great. You seem to be looking very smart today. Do you believe him? No. Because his tone was saying something completely different from his words. But if somebody were to transcribe what he said and write it down on a piece of paper, anybody reading that would say, what a great compliment he is paying to you. Why are you getting upset with uh, him? Because your communication intake took place by looking at him, seeing his body language, 
seeing his demeanor, seeing his tone. Now, if you can learn to listen with your eyes, with your mind, along with your ears, then and then only you become a good uh, listener. Now, there is such a tremendous shortage of good listeners in this uh, uh, world. I remember the young guy who once uh, told me, you know, sir, when I first moved into this city from far away, I had, you know, no friends and no relatives and nobody and I had a good job and I was working very hard. But at the end of the day, I felt, you know, I should have somebody to pour out to, talk to, uh, you know, whatever it is. And I found this wonderful girl. She was such a good listener. Whenever I, at the end of the day, I would either call her up on the phone or go with her to a coffee shop and sit with her. I could talk for hours about whatever is happening in my life and she would wrap attention, she would listen to me. So much so that I fell in love with her and I proposed. And she said, yes, I accept your proposal and we got married. The day of our marriage, it was the priest who was doing the talking and both of us had to keep our mouth shut. The day after the marriage, she started doing the talking and expected me to listen. Today, sir, we have been married for five years and both of us do the talking and the neighbors listen. Don't let that happen to your uh, life. The more you listen, the more you sharpen your listening skill, the more people will talk to you, share with you, express to you, tell you a lot of uh, uh, things. Now comes this practical question, how do I sharpen my listening uh, skills? Please be aware that there is what we call as a differential between talking speed and thinking speed. On an average, a person talks anywhere between 120 to 180 words per minute. I'm probably talking to you right now at about 150 words per minute. You can time me if you want. But you as a human being have the capacity to think at least 500 to 800 words a minute. So if you have been listening to me and I have been talking to you, I have conveyed 150 words to you. But your mind is capable of processing at least 500 words. So you know what your mind does? While I am talking, it takes a quick break, goes out and tries to think of after this discussion is over, should I go in my car or should I take a taxi? Should I finish my lunch first or should I do this? And you come back and you listen to me. But very often what happens is you overshoot. When you are thinking about your future plans, you have overshot that differential of 350 words and you lost track of what I'm saying. And once you lose track, you can't get back. Because the link is lost. Suddenly you don't know what I'm talking and what is the context about the whole thing. Okay. So if this does happen to you, and it is going to happen to you, it happens to all of us. Do one thing. Just interrupt that person and say, sorry, I got a little distracted. Could you please repeat what you were saying? Don't feel bad about it. The other person will feel nice that you admitted it. Because probably looking at your face, he had already sensed that he has lost you, that your mind has gone off somewhere, maybe your eyes are drifting a little away, maybe something of that sort, your expression has changed. So he'll feel nice that you value him so much that you actually said, I want to listen to what you said and I got distracted, so please repeat. He will happily repeat it uh, to you. Never pretend to learn, listen. Never say that, yes, I am listening while your mind is somewhere away. Remember that the listening is inversely proportional to stress. The higher the stress, the lesser is your capacity to listen. So whenever you are under stress, remind yourself that I may not be able to listen well. I am counseling somebody and I am under stress for something that is happening in my life. It's better not to counsel that person. If he is a new person, I would request him please talk to somebody else. If he's a person whom I've already been counseling, let me be frank with him and say, right now I'm under stress, I may not be able to do justice. Sometimes you will come across somebody who says, doesn't matter, Ali, I would still like to talk to you. I feel nice coming and talking to you. I know there are other people, but I wouldn't like to go to. Yeah. Fine, come on, talk. Now I can allow my thoughts to drift. He won't mind. He will say what he wants and gets over it. In fact, 
This has traditionally been known in the uh, West as the bartender approach to listening or to counseling. You know, in a typical bar or an inn, you have this long circular counter and you've got this 10, 12 people sitting on the uh, stools. Each one is having a drink and the bartender is getting the refills from the shelf and pouring it to them and walking around. There are 12 of them and there is one person. All 12 are talking. After a person has a drink or two, he is more than willing to talk out his entire life's history. So here he is going on talking and the 11 other people are talking unconnected things. You know what the bartender does? He keeps saying, hmm, hmm. Every few seconds, he looks generally from this end to that end and says, hmm, hmm, hmm. And all 12 think that he's saying the hmm to them. It's actually a practice which bartenders have used very successfully to hold back the customer. The more the number of whoms, the more the number of pegs he has and the more money this man uh, makes. Okay, I'm not suggesting that you become a bartender. But the good part of it, the technique part of it, learn. Reflect back in the simplest possible words, starting with the whom. Going on to yes, okay, fine. Yes, I do understand. Yes, that must be terrible. You must be upset. Okay, fine. Is it? That's all that you need to do. Very often, you know, budding counselors ask this question. Okay, I got this person. He came, he sat down, he introduced him, uh, himself. And he said, I came for your uh, help because I am having this relationship problem or this, this, this. And then he started sitting there and staring at me. Now, I didn't know what to do. What do I ask him? What do I tell him? How do I make this thing go forward? First, I'll tell you what not to do to make it go forward. Don't ask a stupid question. Don't ask a question which is a, what we call as a curiosity question. Remember the difference between a curiosity question and a concern question. Supposing this person says that, you know, my younger brother whom I loved so much and I took care of him all throughout his childhood is today acting so funny with me. is actually demanding a share of the property or whatever he is telling. If you could ask him a question, he gets stuck. And if you could ask him a concern question saying, it must be hurting you very badly knowing that your own younger brother who is more like a son to you is today making this, this, this. That's a concern question. A curiosity question when you get stuck and this happens very often, please guard yourself against it is just because you want to say something and you want to take the conversation forward, you may look at him and say, uh, how much younger is your brother to you? Does it really matter? No. Do you think he's a fool? He doesn't understand that it was just your discomfort and you didn't know what to say. So you asked him that stupid uh, question. So firstly, I have a very simple theory as far as uh, counseling is concerned. Whenever in doubt about what to say, don't. Just keep your mouth shut. Look at the person. Have a nice pleasant expression on your face. Smile at the person. Make eye contact. Don't hesitate or go away from making eye contact. Have a nice comfortable eye contact with the person. Show him that you are there with him. You will be amazed how many people who have stopped at a particular point wait and if you have the patience to listen and if you do not interrupt and if you do not ask silly questions, literally you can clock yourself one, two, three, four, five seconds and the person starts talking again, including a person who has asked a question. Sir, I've come to this point. I have to take a decision. Should I go on suffering like this in my job or should I quit? Tell me, I want your advice. Now that's when you panic. What advice should I give? Or I was told not to give her advice. And if I don't give advice, won't this person look at me and say what a fool he is. I'm asking him should I quit this job or not and he's not even answering the question to me. But if you could come back to what I was telling you all this while, make eye contact. Smile at him, nod your head, maybe say, hmm, okay, yes, you have to take this decision, right? Yes, we will do it. 
I will help you take this decision. No, I can postpone the decision by 15 days. Not that I have to take it this month. Anyway, I will wait till this uh, festival is over because we are likely to get a bonus. He starts off. He is giving you the answer. Now, if he knew the answer, why did he ask you? Because while he knew the answer, it was stuck somewhere at his subconscious uh, level. By pouring it out to you and by making it lighter and by your carrying the silence and not interrupting uh, uh, him, you helped him to put those jigsaw puzzle pieces in order and the picture came out and he said, okay, anyway, I'm not going to leave till I get my annual bonus. So I have a month more to decide. Now I'll go ahead with, okay, now that you have a month, what would you like to do? Maybe I'll go and talk to that friend of mine who is in HR. I'll go and do this or I'll check with my family members or I will do this or that. He comes out with so many things. Again, encourage him, empower him, go ahead with the uh, thing. So whenever you have this sort of situation, do not tell the person that I'm not going to help you. Say, yes, I'm going to help you. Yes, I am going to help you find the uh, um, answer. I know you are very concerned. I know you are very upset. You want to take a decision. You have done the right thing by coming uh, to me and I will help you with this. Whenever you feel that the person has just made a statement and is stuck in, uh, you know, what else to say? I can't think of anything. The easiest answer to make him talk is to say, let's say I come to you with an issue. A particular issue, I say that I'm having a lot of problems with my spouse and I tell you the whole thing, what exactly the issue is and then I get stuck. And then I say, yeah, what else should I say? As a good counselor, what you can do is you can tell me, yes, Ali, I understand that you are going through a very difficult phase in your marriage and I will help you with that. But you know something, I want to get to know you as a person better. Can you talk more about yourself? I just told you, you know, that I am working in this company and I am an engineer and I am this. No, that doesn't define you. That's only your bio data. I want to know Ali as a person, as a human being, what you are. Yeah, but then uh, what you want to know about my background, my childhood? Yes, why not? Come, tell me about your childhood. No, nothing great. I had an ordinary childhood. I want to know about that ordinary childhood. I've got all the time. Go ahead. And when the person starts talking, Believe me, even if nothing else happens, no problem is solved at that moment. First thing is he feels nice that somebody gave so much importance to me that he even wanted to know that I was born in such and such small town 40 years back into a lower middle class family and my father was a school teacher and all, which nobody normally seems to take an interest in. And here was this person who was giving me a smile, who was nodding his head who was so impressed when I told him that although my father was a very poor school teacher, but he was so respected in all the towns around and people used to look up to him with so much regard. And I could see the expression on the counselor that he is giving that regard and respect not only to my father, but to me because I am my father's son and I felt so nice about it. This is the you know, benefit of listening, which has not been taught to most of us. Most of the time we have not been told what are the advantages, why I should be a good uh, listener. Somebody as capable and as famous as Dale Carnegie said, you can spend two years trying to get somebody interested in you. You will not succeed as much as if you spend two months taking interest in that person. Like I told you about cricket and tennis. Take an interest in the person even if you are not interested in that uh, particular topic. Because to be a good listener, I want you to understand there is no such thing as an interesting topic and uninteresting topic. There are only interested people and uninterested people. You are an uninterested person. The topic is not uninteresting. Let's say you tell me, I am not interested in cricket. I don't want to know. Tomorrow you come to know that your cousin brother has just been selected for the All India team of cricket. Still not interested in cricket. Anybody you meet after that you will be talking nothing but cricket. Why? Because your cousin brother is one of the players. So you see, it was your own approach, your own attitude. The same way, treat 
that counselee, that caller, that person, that human being in front of you as your cousin brother, as how you would do to a dear friend. If he is interested in talking about cricket, I will take interest, not because I want to learn more about cricket, but because I want to know more about this person. I want to understand what this person is. And to be an effective counsellor, unless and until I understand the person, there is no way I am going to be able to help him. And the beauty of it is that the more I listen, the more I understand him, the more he understands himself. As the thing proceeds further and further, all you have to do is, even if you feel that the conversation is faltering, he is not being able to speak very smoothly or he is getting stuck at a particular point, First find out why he is getting stuck. If you are a good observer of body language, you will notice he may be stuck because he is thinking deeply. Allow him that. Maintain the silence. It may be because he is choked up. He feels if I say one more sentence, I will break down and cry. Allow him uh, that. It could be that suddenly he came to a point where he felt, can I share this next bit of information with this person? Can I trust that? person. And the worst thing that you can do is to tell him, yes, 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 you can talk anything. I will maintain your confidentiality. Go ahead and talk. No. You know what I do? I tell the person, if at this juncture you are not comfortable sharing something personal with me, don't. We have enough time. Maybe not today, maybe some other day. Think. Whatever you are comfortable with, talk only that to uh, me. See how your comfort level goes. You are not okay with sharing something personal. Doesn't matter. Believe me, 8 out of 10 times, when I have made that statement, the person turns 180 degrees and says, No, 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 it's okay. I might as well tell you this. Because I gave him the choice. That's what makes for a good uh, uh, listener. Only in the case where he seems to be genuinely stuck and he doesn't know how to proceed. We use this tool called paraphrasing, rephrasing. Give back to him in a concise form whatever he had spoken in an elaborate way. My younger brother whom I took care of, I looked after him like my own son. My father passed away early. I had this responsibility. I did this for him. Then he grew up. He studied. He got a good job. I helped him get a good alliance and I conducted the marriage and now that he is married and he has got children and he is earning very well, he has turned around against me and he is demanding the property and he wants me to vacate the house or something. So that's what I have told you for the last 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and now I am stuck. All that the counsellor needs to do is to turn around to him and paraphrase. What is hurting you more is the fact that he is asking you for this. Or am I right in thinking that you are getting, feeling very upset because even your mother seems to be siding with your uh, brother? Put it in a question mark. So even if it is not true, he will not feel offended. But he will feel nice that you not only listened, but you paid so much attention to what I uh, said that you could come out with a question uh, like that, a question of concern. There is also this thing called open-ended questions, close-ended questions, leading uh, questions. A good counsellor, as far as possible, sticks to open-ended uh, questions. Tell me more. How do you look upon this issue today? Are you comfortable with the way life is going right now? Do you feel happy or unhappy with these circumstances? How have your emotions been throughout this last one year when you went through this whole uh, turmoil? Tell me a little more about your family. These are all what we call as open-ended questions. It gives a lot of choice to the person. He can decide what to answer. The moment you ask a specific question, how is your relationship with your wife? He is alert. He is not sure whether he would like to share this uh, with you. That is what we call as a close-ended uh, question. Using these few very, very basic techniques, if you can go on practicing to be a good listener, and as I told you earlier, in the worst case that you find that you are losing track, you even find that it is getting late, 
let's say involuntarily i have an appointment in the next 15 minutes i have to leave and go and do something and i'm not sure about the time is if involuntarily i look at my wristwatch and look back at him be truthful and tell him sorry i looked at my watch because at this particular time i have to be there can we do one thing we still have another 10 minutes uh, more would you like to tell me about what your early life was you were telling me that after your father passed away the responsibility came on you can we discuss that for another 10 minutes before i leave and then we will meet up at certain such time and we will uh, continue with the uh, thing so right from the time of how to make a person open out and talk to the point where you have to stop listening you have to be aware of these very basic and very simple tools that you can use to ensure that the communication is smooth that to ensure that the person genuinely comes out with his feelings and talks whatever you know he wants to do and the whole process starts moving forward i want to assure you that the better a listener you are the better you give opportunities to the person to go on pouring out with that catharsis and emptying out the less will be the need for you to actually go into any form of goal setting or helping him resolve his issues or whatever it is that's the best service that you can give to a counselee is the best service you can give to your loved ones it's the best service you can give to a stranger so please go ahead and build practice and go on sharpening the skill of listening best of luck